In this video, we'll walk through replacing the seals in the Challenger pump provided in the Quick Kit from Pentair. If you're doing this work on a pump that's still installed in the system plumbing, make sure to close the suction and discharge gate valves to avoid flooding the equipment and always follow manufacturer safety and warning instructions. The quick kit for the Challenger comes with mechanical shaft seal, the diffuser o-ring for the high flow pumps up to 3 horsepower, the pump lid gasket for the 5 horsepower high flow pumps, the seal plate gasket for all Challenger models, the pump lid o-ring for all models other than the 5 horsepower, the strainer pot o-ring, the diffuser o-ring for the 5 horse high flow and all high pressure pumps, two drain plug o-rings, and a small tube of silicone lubricant. Let's start by removing the pump lid. Using the lid handle, unscrew the lid. Let's go ahead and remove the pump lid o-ring while we have the lid. And also remove the strainer basket from the strainer pot. Remove the drain plug from the strainer pot. Along with the drain plug o-ring. Now we need to remove the strainer pot from the housing by removing the four bolts that secure them together. These bolts can be removed with a half inch wrench. The strainer pot o-ring sits in a groove on the pot. Use a pick or a small flat blade screwdriver to help remove it. And now let's go ahead and remove the drain plug from the housing. Along with the o-ring. Now we need to remove the housing from the seal plate by removing the band clamp that secures them together. We'll leave it on the pump base for now to help with balance while we remove the band clamp. Once the knob is removed, we may need the help of a rubber hammer to help free the band clamp. Remove the band clamp, and then let's remove the pump from the base so we can remove the housing. And now we can remove the old steel plate gasket from the housing. The diffuser o-ring sits in a groove on the diffuser, so let's use a small pick or flat blade screwdriver to remove this o-ring. The diffuser is held in place by three screws. We can use a quarter inch driver to remove these screws. The diffuser comes off along with the diffuser mounting plate. To remove the impeller, we need to remove the impeller lock screw. And to do this, we need to remove the cover from the back of the motor to access the motor shaft. The cover is held in place with one screw. We can use a flat blade screwdriver or one quarter inch nut driver to loosen the screw and remove the cover. And now we can use a half inch wrench to hold the motor shaft in place while we loosen the impeller locking screw. If you have a pump that has a TEFC or totally enclosed fan cooled motor, you can hold the shaft with an Allen key without removing the cover. And remember the impeller locking screw is a left hand thread screw, so clockwise to loosen.
Once we've removed the impeller locking screw, continue holding the motor shaft and loosen the impeller by turning it counterclockwise. Now we can see a part of the shaft seal. Let's use a pair of pliers to get this portion of the seal off of the shaft. Next, we need to remove the seal plate from the motor by removing the four bolts that secure them together. We can remove these bolts with a 9 16th wrench. And then remove the seal plate from the motor. To remove the portion of the seal that's in the seal plate, We'll lay the seal plate flat and drive the seal out with a 5 8 socket. To reassemble the pump, let's start by cleaning the seal plate gasket surface area and the seal seat. Now spray the seal seat with a mixture of water and light duty detergent to help seat the seal. And when handling the seal, be careful not to touch the sealing surface with your hands since oils and dirt on the skin can shorten the life of the seal or cause it not to seal properly. Insert the seal into the seal plate and then here we use a half inch coupling to help push the seal into place. And if you do contaminate the seal, you can clean it with alcohol and a lint free cloth. When installing the seal plate onto the motor, make sure that the two arrows on the back of the seal plate are in the top position. Slide the seal plate onto the shaft of the motor and reinstall the four bolts that secure it. It's a good idea to use grease or anises on the threads of the bolt to prevent them from seizing. Tighten these bolts evenly in a crisscross manner to prevent distorting the seal plate. The torque spec on these bolts is 70 to 80 inch pounds. When handling the spring loaded portion of the seal, be sure again not to touch the sealing surface with your fingers to contaminate it. Slide the seal onto the shaft of the motor. And don't worry if it doesn't go all the way down because tightening the impeller on will seat the seal. Install the impeller by threading it onto the motor shaft clockwise and then hold the shaft of the motor with a half inch wrench and hand tighten the impeller. Install the impeller locking screw by threading it in counterclockwise and holding the back of the motor shaft with a half inch wrench. Tighten the impeller locking screw with a 3 8 nut driver. To install the diffuser and the diffuser mounting plate, align the elongated screw hole at the top of the diffuser with the larger of the three holes in the mounting plate. Then reattach it with the three diffuser screws. Now install the appropriate diffuser o-ring into the groove on the diffuser. Now to install the housing onto the seal plate, we first want to apply a small amount of the silicone lubricant supplied with the kit to the seal plate gasket. And then install the seal plate gasket into the groove on the housing. Now install the housing onto the seal plate. Align the tab on the seal plate with the tab on the housing. Let's put the assembly back on the base to help install the band clamp. Loop the band clamp around the motor and then position it in place to secure the housing to the seal plate. Make sure that both the housing and seal plate are inside the band clamp. Slide the bolt through the barrel swivel and then install the knob. The knob for the clamp should be at the top of the pump. Tighten the clamp by hand 
Usually when the clamp starts to squeak, it's tight enough. The knob should be parallel with the floor when tightened and installed properly. Now let's go ahead and install the drain plug into the housing. Install the new row ring onto the drain plug and then thread the drain plug into the housing and tighten it hand tight. To install the strainer pot, first apply a small amount of the supplied silicone lubricant to the strainer pot o-ring. Then install the o-ring into the groove on the strainer pot. Align the strainer pot with the housing and reinstall the four bolts that secure them together. It's a good idea to use grease or anti-seize on the bolts that secure the strainer pot to the housing. Tighten these bolts evenly in a crisscross manner to avoid distorting the pot. Install a new o-ring onto the drain plug for the strainer pot and reinstall the drain plug. Reinstall the motor cover and tighten the screw with a flat blade screwdriver or a one quarter inch nut driver. Align the notch on the strainer basket with the tab inside the strainer pot and reinstall the strainer basket. Make sure that the sealing surface of the lid and the top of the strainer pot are thoroughly clean. Lubricate the pump lid o-ring with a supplied silicone lubricant. Install the pump lid o-ring onto the pump lid and reinstall the pump lid. And the pump is now ready to go back into service.